Good morning, fans of Privateer FX. Coming at you, 03 September. It's a Tuesday, full liquidity. Uh, first, f first day of full liquidity in the fall season. We love fall here because a couple reasons. Um, usually there's good vol, uh, and usually uh, all of the funds around the world that are under pressure to get into the year return start putting on some big positions. So uh makes it more fun and more interesting time of the year. So uh, voila, here we are. Uh, exciting. Don't wanna, nothing's going to happen uh, in one second, but we'll just see how things build in. Uh, certainly this euro looks to be um, a trade that's going to create a bit of a stir heading into ECB. We now have one, two, three, four, five... Six, seven red days uh, on the trot here. But first, let's look at um, let's look at Aussie RBA last night. Um, left the rates unchanged, but ready to s ready to to ease monetary policy further if needed to support global economic growth. So we got a little bit of a jack down um, to eighty eight. Now we're back here at twelve. Kind of. Top side looks kind of interesting. I just didn't really like it down there, right? I mean, um, you know, I don't know what to say about that except for the fact that people are very short Aussie already. Um, and just didn't really sustain. I mean, we should have really uh, not been back above 06 once we've closed uh, below it. Now here we are. So, kind of interesting. Aussie top side, I think, looks slightly interesting. No, not, not a five star, um, not a five star deal. They talked about slower growth. They talked about a nascent recovery in housing. Um, keep in mind, GDP uh, for the second quarter is due tomorrow, so that's sort of the next piece in the puzzle. As far as uh, today goes, we have UK PMI construction, and uh, we have Europe producer price inflation index, uh, 11 Swiss time, and then we have uh, ISM manufacturing in the US, so kind of all sort of second rate stuff. Let's have a look at the charts, uh, see what's going on. Yesterday, dollar CAD, that worked out all right. Got long through 40, got short at 60. Um, we think today uh, you can sell this anywhere between sort of 45 and 65. Um, you can also sell this back through 10 now. So we put in that 10 low. Uh, that was rather interesting good chance we head up back towards 60 in this sort of newfangled range. We don't think this is going to live on the range highs um, heading into the Bank of Canada tomorrow. So we're sellers of this actually. The way it responded yesterday made sense to us. Took out some stops then got slapped. Uh, it's no coincidence that it went down to 13. A lot of the entries were at between 40 and 45. Anyone who left a 30 pointer left it at 15. Um, so they just took out stops on the top side, took out stops on the downside. Here we are. Um, but we don't think this is going to make any sort of famous range break before BOC tomorrow. Uh, keep an eye on Euro dollar in, in today's session if you're going to be trading dollar CAD. If Euro dollar does turn, that will be a good time to sell dollar CAD. Here's the hourly chart in Euro. Uh, down to 30. Here we are at 35. Like we said on the dailies, this is the seventh red day. It's kind of unusual. Um, no real support until, let's go to the weeklies. Really until um, 108.50. You could argue that there is some mild support at 16, but it's not, it's 
not really definitive. Um, 108.50, and then there's this gap fill, right? Um, so 107.30 is really the, the the big big support. So medium term 108.50 to 107.50, we'll call it is is support. Um, not sure what to do with it. We don't. We're not really super excited about trading euro today, so uh, we'll just leave that alone. Let's go to dollar czar. We got some numbers here today. GDP is going to make this thing move. Um, obviously, 50 is a huge level. Uh, you could argue the same thing about 08. We're dead smack in the middle, so this is just going to be a binary situation on a big, big miss. You buy dollars are on a big, uh, on a big win or a big uh, a much stronger number you sell dollars are that was very very weak last time so a lot of people are going to be watching this this will create vol I'm going forward today um, we have sterling news going to be bandied about got smacked yesterday with all of this um, news about parliamentary votes and possible elections and who wants an election, does Boris want one, does he want it on the 16th before, uh, does Corbyn want one, I, I totally don't understand who wants what or what the hell is going on here, um, but it does now look like this is going to at least break this uh, 12019 I don't think it's going to be a sustained full break. In fact, I do expect it to be a false break. We still maintain the fact that you can be short cross. Um, but watch that. Watch out for this down here. If you, you know, we've been we've been avoiding cable for a reason because we, with euro dollar going down like this, it's going to be always going to be hard for cable to stabilize. Now we're so close to this one twenty sixteen. Um, you want you're gonna expect that to to break today at some point, um, and then obviously through 120 will scare some people. I don't know if it's gonna have any energy just because this news is is out here and we don't really know what it means yet. Um, but just be aware one one twenty sixteen is prior lows. On the cross side, we're up here at the top of the range. Um, you want to resell this up here. Uh, you want to be careful now. Um, make the sizing appropriate so you have some room here, so you don't have to really stop out exactly at 91.25. Um, probably need to stop above 55. Um, one of these twitchy moments reminds me of stocks up at uh, 29.50. You could expect this to break a little bit this 24 high or this high here from the other day which was 08 certainly looks like it's in jeopardy so you want to fade a little bit of a break on these these bars here speaking of stocks uh, worked out pretty well yesterday sold 26s uh, we squared before the news that took us down to uh, 89 here we are at 05 um, you know, it looks middle of the range again. We talked about this. The news isn't great. Uh, we should, I think, trundle back down, um, back down to this 2850 area. So where's the sell point today? Well, the news came out at 17, so anywhere between 17 and say 25, we're gonna we're gonna try and sell this. Uh, and trade this from the short side again today. Stops have to be a little bit tighter now. This is why it's super tricky to trade mid-range. Your real stop has to be, you know, above 45. So on an intraday trade. So I don't know. Now that I'm just talking about this out loud, we may just skip spoos today because it's quite hard just to be short intraday because your stop has to be at some ridiculous place and we're fa let's face it we're just one comment away from uh, you know silliness from old Trumpy humpy Trumpy um, we talked about 
fixed income and how we think this might be turning. This is the 10-year uh, yield. It does look like we're getting this sort of very quiet, sneaky turn down here. Reminds me of this, reminds me of this, reminds me of this. So we've seen this a lot of times now. Um, obviously, we might be building into something for Friday, which is non-farms, a big beat on non-farms, and this is going to move. Also, Powell is speaking on Friday. So two things you can do here. You can sell ZN. Uh, this is the yield, right? This isn't the actual contract. You can sell ZN at the 150 uh, yield point with a stop now below 145 and say to yourself, okay, I think this is the turn. I don't have to risk a ton for this. Uh, or you could wait till Friday or wait for some sort of trigger to really uh, get this thing moving. Um, we're just going to have to see. It's wait and see for us. Boons are less so but kind of doing the same thing yesterday we had a mysterious move down to 178.60 this is now a break trade 178.60 um, but if you look at the yield on boons it's less this could be just a massive double bottom now um, it's less pronounced than uh, the yield move in US but something to watch and the reason we're watching is because it's just so stretched we're looking for any indication um, that the insanity uh, is is subsiding. Quickly, Euro Norway. For those of you who stayed with this trade, God bless you. Um, looks like it's turned. Going into ECB, this should go down further. Um, this trade has made sense all along. It's made sense for a month. It hasn't done anything for a month. Um, but eventually this is going to break this 990 handle here and um, go back to 970. So two nice red days here. That's usually a good sign for Euro Norway lower if you still have that. We do not. We we gave up on that last week. Not much else to say. Uh, like I said, the autumn season's here. So um, let's all get excited and let's get ready. Not a whole lot of setups to sink our teeth in today. We'll be watching the news feeds, watching these sterling levels. Um, cable is going to break 120 today at some point. We're cautious with this euro dollar on the seventh red day. Um, and it looks like Aussie didn't like it down there, so we may see a move higher in Aussie now. Uh, but no five-star levels, just little... Uh, little tester amounts, social amounts today for now um, and we'll wait and see looking for better setups uh, for to really get stuck in. That's all I got for you guys today. Good luck out there. Try and make some dough and um, you know what? I will uh, see you all tomorrow. Ciao.